Hello YouTube. Today we're going to talk about superheat. How to calculate it, what it is, go over some kind of refrigeration basics. So hopefully uh, all my knowledge as a college instructor and almost a 20 year veteran can help some people out here. So superheat, you calculate it as it says here, suction line temperature minus your low side saturation. That will equal your superheat. What you're calculating by that is how much heat has been added to the refrigerant after it's boiled off in the evaporator. So we got a little basic diagram here. It was drawn by me. It's not a Da Vinci or a Picasso. I know it's hard to tell the difference between my drawings and famous art artists like that, but it is drawn by me. We have our high side of the system, which is labeled there with Cond, which would be the condenser. EVAP is on the low side of the system. Your compressor is the heart of it. I drew this out very basic where you have a filter dryer and a TXV or TEV depending if it's Parker or Sporland. Your filter dryer is always before the TXV. Sensing bulb goes on the suction line the outlet of the evaporator. Essentially, you're going to take a superheat measurement for suction line temperature and pressure right in this area on the low side of the system. For more accuracy you want to be as close to that sensing bulb for your TXV as possible. <clears throat> All we're doing is checking now if the evaporator here, we're going to pick a we'll say an air conditioner. It boils off at 40 degrees Fahrenheit that's going to be what's called a saturation temperature. You get that by taking your gauge you hook it to the low side of the system. If it was R22, let's say, oh, 70 PSIG, 6970, you'd be looking at a 40 degree evaporator. If it was like R134A with a about 15 PSI, you're talking roughly 15, 16 degree saturation temperature. What that saturation is, the temperature of the refrigerant right there in the evaporator that's the temperature it's boiling off you have your liquid and vapor mixture there all you're doing essentially when you calculate superheat is check the level of refrigerant in the system if it's a cap tube or piston or the TXV verify TXV operation it's important that you get the calculation right by doing a suction line minus low side saturation as that's the formula. If you get it backwards you can come up with a wrong number and you have no idea if the system's broke because you did the math wrong. So let's say we boiled off at 40 degrees there. So our saturation we'll put as 40 there. Let's say we put our temperature probe broken pencil. Hey, there we go. Well, look, we're doing it. Yay. We go right there for a suction line temperature and it was we'll say 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Minus, put our equal sign there, 50 minus 40 means the system's going to run with 10 degrees of superheat. If you had it backwards, let's say the system was a piston that was grossly overcharged where you had saturation of 40 so we're gonna make a new 40 right over there but your suction line let's say ended up being 30 degrees if you didn't go by suction line minus low side saturation to calculate it just did big number minus little number minus equal you would come up with 10 by going big number minus little number and think hey this system got to be working okay because I got 10 degrees superheat no you're wrong you did it backwards so you got the wrong number reality is you would have 40 minus 30 or 30 minus 40 which means negative 10 what that means right there is you have no superheat going into the compressor. You actually have liquid refrigerant and it's called slugging the compressor. That's what's actually going to happen is this shell is going to start having 
before the compressor is going to start having a liquid refrigerant in there, you risk slugging the compressor, you're going to blow out your valves and pistons, all that stuff. So remember, suction line temperature minus low side saturation, because you're trying to pick up how much heat did the evaporator at transfer to the uh, refrigerant. If you had, let's say, a superheat of 5 right there, you could have a grossly overcharged system, hence the low superheat. If the superheat right here was, let's say, 30 degrees, you would have too high of superheat, and that would mean you're either undercharged or you have a big load on the evaporator. I'll give you a little tip here. If you have too high a superheat with a TXV, either A, the screen's clogged up, or B, the TXV is malfunctioning, and it just can't adjust to add the refrigerant here. So... There's some basics on superheat. Look forward to a whole refrigeration system video coming up in the future. Take care. Bye-bye.